Hey girl, hey. So today I have a special segment for you all. Sipping wine and talking about what's on my mind. So get your wine, get comfortable. I have a special guest that's going to join me and we are getting ready to chit chat it up about everything that's on our mind. Stay tuned. Today we are sipping wine and talking about what's on our mind. So hopefully you got your wine, we have ours, and we're ready to talk. So I have my friend here, Felicia, and today's topic is dating in your 30s. Um, specifically for us in our city, because we both live in Indiana, um, and we're both in our 30s, we have children, and you know, being in this world and dating is have y'all ever seen the meme that says that the pool got, the dating pool got pee in it? I agree. It's pretty tainted. Like, to find one <laughs> is kind of hard. So, today we're just going to chat about some of the things that we go through um, as we've been dating and meeting people and all of those things. And then I have a few questions that we're going to ask. So, Felicia, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, hi, I'm Felicia. Um, I am... I live here, like she was saying, inside of the outskirts of Indianapolis, but still Indianapolis area. Um, I have uh, five children, but there are different ranges of ages between um, 18 to 6. Oh, no, 7. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> um, so 18 to 7 and everything. So, and I am currently single um, with possibilities, I guess. Yeah, so... We were talking, and one of the things that we were talking about is um, one of the reasons why I, um, I asked her to join me during this discussion is because, you know, when you're a parent, a single parent, you're dating with kids, as they get older, some of the restrictions kind of lift that you've put in place. One of the things that I can always think of is when my kids were younger and a guy would come and be like, hey, what you doing? You want to go out to dinner? Well, at that time, I got a four and an eight-year-old, and I'm like, uh, nah, bro, we got to plan this. Like, it steps to this. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, let's go. Now... If somebody were to call and say, hey, you want to go out to dinner? I don't have to do all that. All I got to do is make sure whatever activities my kids are in, that my schedule is free. And if I want to go, I'm going to go. If not, then I might make up an excuse. You know how that goes, ladies. So I know that that's one of the things we were talking about with our kids being older. Because as single parents, that's something, you know, it's a planning process um, when dating. But we don't have those, you know, those hurdles anymore now that the kids are older and though Felicia has younger, she has the older ones, which means she's free to go. Right. <laughs> that is <exactly> so, right. <laughs> We have some questions that we're going to talk about. So again, the discussion, the topic is dating in our 30s and we both live here in Indiana. So one of the questions that I have for you, Felicia, is your what are your thoughts about the dating scene here in Indianapolis? Um, so far, I think that you know, it kind of sucks. Um, I mm -hmm. have found that um, I, for me, the age range that I usually look for is someone that's older than me. So I actually go all the way to the age of 49, 50 years. Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> the reason why I chose that age group is because, number one, I know that they're not looking to probably have any more kids. Um, number two, they should be established inside of their career. By mm -hmm. me having five kids and me already inside of my career as well, I don't want somebody who's young and who just still don't have anything figured out. Um, th uh, three, um, I feel that a lot, one thing that I have seen um, is when they get to that age, they're looking to own their own business and to, um, they have, they're looking more so into their retirement. And so they, um, um, they also, when it comes down to relationship wise, to me, they're already been married or they've been married twice already, or they already been through this. So they're not looking to just be players or anything else mm -hmm. and you can you can actually have an adult relationship you know which means that I don't I should not have to have somebody who's always calling me or texting me hey what you doing what you doing what you doing they but they texting. understand Oops. that hey you have a life and I have a life and then when we get together we can see one another then it's about us you know what I mean not about the daily struggles that we have we know how to communicate you know so that's the reason why i usually try to go out with 
the older ones rather than like if you're 23, 28, you can't do that for me. Not I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> Even sometimes 30, 33, you know, um, because when you think back, when was when did you feel like you were most established even growing as a woman, you know? Yeah, it wasn't 30, 34 or down, probably not. Right. So it's just happened within the last few years. And then we think. know that men, it takes them a while to mature. Yes, so. they're, they're a couple years behind us. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so. Yeah, that does make sense. <laughs> They are. So that's why 40, I would say 42, and I'm 38, so I would say 42, oh no, 42 is questionable, but yeah. So I would agree, like I said in the beginning, I think that the dating pool here in Indiana or Indianapolis is tainted. Um, I think for me, I dated a guy who was nine years older than me. Okay. Um, in the beginning, it was cool, he could hang, but as time went along, he really began to act his age. Like, it was almost like he was putting on a front. And as time went along, he got comfortable. Okay. And then you could see the age difference. Because um, I do agree that I would prefer to date older. So I typically go for my age or older. Okay. Um, but I would never date anybody that was nine years older than me ever again. Really? Be no, because one thing, I feel like I'm young and pop. Years, right, 12. <laughs> so if I'm young and pop, I need you to be ready to pop with me. Right, well, I have dated everybody who I have dated, which I which has been surprising, is like 12 years older than me. So, and mm -hmm. they actually um, are, are young in heart. And they're like, no. it's like cool. And I'm just sitting right there like, oh my gosh, you know? Yeah, no, <laughs> I didn't have that experience. And we were together for two years. Mm -hmm. um, I think part of what lasted for me was that he wasn't local. So I, I, I always tell people, if I have a choice, I wouldn't date anybody in Indianapolis. I just don't, for one of the things that I don't like is that the city is small. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to hear about how you know somebody that I know or you used to mess with my baby daddy, sister, cousins, aunties, kids. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to hear all of that. Yeah. I, just, I just prefer not to. So in the last, for the last four years, Anybody that I've talked to on that level didn't live here. Okay. So when the guy that I mentioned that was nine years older than me, he lived in northern Indiana. Oh, okay. And he was here when I met him, but he wasn't he wasn't from here and he didn't live here. So we made it work. We commuted back and forth. Um, there was a few guys that I, after we broke up and went our separate ways that I talked to, and they lived in the state of Indiana, okay. but none of, them, none of them live in Indianapolis. Okay. I like it that way. Now, there's pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not a, um, hey, what you doing? I'm going to cook tonight. You want to pull up and watch a movie and have dinner type right. of situation. It's more of a plan, and it has to be intentional. But it also allows you to get to know each other because all you got is a conversation, right. pretty much. So mm -hmm. that part I do like. I don't, I, like I said, I, so I would never do nine years. I think for me, being 38, I would only go to about 42. And you got to be a good fun 42. <laughs> Like, because like I said, I like to do fun stuff. Yeah. I like to travel. I like mm -hmm. to be outside. I like to ride bikes. Like, I don't got time for you needing to take a nap. You falling asleep <laughs> during the movie. Not everybody that age have to take a nap. Well, that's what I think of. But I think of somebody, oh, like, you got to go home. Baby, I got to go home take a nap. I'm going to get up about 630 and then I'm going <laughs> to pick you up. Like, I'm not ready to ride in on your Harley with the music blasting and the people can hear us coming. I want to ride on the crotch market where I can still toot that thing up. <laughs> like, I'm just not ready. And even though I'm 38, I don't look it, but I don't, I, I act my age when time being, but I'm still fun and right. I still want to have fun. So. Right. <laughs> and I just, I think for me, as far as the dating scene in Indianapolis, it's really so much of, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to hear about your history and who you dealt with in the city. Right. I could care less. If that yeah. was me and this is now. Right. But on top of that, I think that, and this probably goes for many different cities, that a lot of times the females have made it hard for us yes. because of the way that they come to um, us. Yes. That they think it's okay. Like, yes. if you, I can't stand an A, A, A. Oh, no. B, B, B is right. what I be thinking. Right. So it's like, for example, I'll give you an example. I was on my way to uh, a birthday party and I had to get some gas. I stopped at Speedway. Now, this is during the pandemic, so everybody's wearing masks. And where we're, we live at, the mask mandate is still applied. So you're supposed to be having your mask on. So I walk into the gas station and there's this guy in there. You know how you can feel somebody looking at you? Right. So I could tell he was looking at me, but I'm still trying to get my own stuff. And I really don't want to make eye contact because right. I'm not interested. One, because you don't have on a mask. So I feel like you're living life on the edge. <laughs> and two, because I'm trying to get my gas and get to where I'm going. Right. So he's ahead of me. 
does what he needs to do. He goes on out. I do what I need to do. I come on out. I pump my gas. Well, come to find out the car that he was in was right there at the other pump. Mm -hmm. He's in the passenger side of the car. He rolls down the back oh, driver no window. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> who in the hell are you paying? Like at this point, so I'm trying to pump my gas because I don't want to be bothered. First off, if I'm at the gas station, you want to holler, pump my, come pump my gas. Right, right? Hey, yes. excuse me, I can take care of that phone. You can pump my gas because I hate pumping gas. Me too. So that was, I was, I was just looking at him. I never took my mask off because I was like, I don't even want to do that. Like, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. But in my mind, I'm like, you live life on the edge, you don't follow directions, and you in the passenger seat, you're A and me, and then you say, I'm on my way to pick up my car right now. <laughs> I don't care. Right. Like, it, it was over when you didn't have on a mask. Right. And then the ice on the cake is when you're in the passenger seat yelling A. Right. A. <clears throat> yeah. So it's just like I had a situation like, like that happen before to me as well, whereas the guy was sitting right there and he was like, A, A. And I was going out, I was living inside of apartments and I was getting my mail. And so I ignored him. And he, yeah. so then after that, he finally approached me at the, um, at the gas uh, at the mailbox and so he was like oh, did you hear me calling you and i was like no i did it i was like um he was like oh but um he's like i was i was i was calling you then i was like no and i was like but now that you approached me i was like and you came over here and treated me like a lady and finally spoke to me i was like what could i do for you he was like oh no i just thought that you was cute and i just wanted to get your name and i was like um, he was like, but you didn't answer. And I was like, yes, if I have answered, I was like, then anytime that you would have called me the, out of my name, like the B word or anything, I was like, then you, I would have to answer to that. And I was like, and I'm not a dog. And I, I don't do, answer to whistles. I was like, I am a woman. I am a human being. And he was like, you're not from here, are you? I was like, no. But I was like, but it, that's just called self-respect. That's just called respecting who you are as a right. woman. And I was like, if I want to speak to you, I'm not going to be like, hey, dude. Hey, dude. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. What? Right. <laughs> <Right. Right. laughs> I'm not going to do that. But I will approach you like the man that you are and, you know, say, hey, I think you're nice looking. Can I get your name? Can I get your number? And he was like, can we start over? And I was like, no, that's it. I mean, first impression means a lot. He was, and I say, like, so I hope that this encounter will make you do something differently. And he was like, you're just not like all the other women out here. I was like, well, that was your mistake of thinking that I was like the other women out here. I was like, because no, every woman is different. I was like, so unfortunately, I'm sorry, but you have a nice day. <laughs> But AA worked on somebody. That's why he AA did. worked on someone. And that's what he told that's me. Why he, he was like, oh no, this is what happens inside of, um, you know, he was like, out here, this is what women want. And I was like, no. Not this one. I was like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so our next question is um, dating intentionally versus dating for recreational purposes. So when I, um, one of the things that I decided last, was it last year? Maybe the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, somewhere in that. They all running together at this point. Right. <laughs> but one of the things that I decided was, I'm somebody's wife. And I wanted to yes. start to uh, manifest that and, you know, do what I needed to do to get prepared to be somebody's wife. So yes. I have decided that I no longer want to date for recreational purposes. Yes. Like, I got kids I can go to the movies with, go yes. bowling with. If it's not intentional, then they're, I'm not interested. And I begin to tell people that as we, you know, hey, you know, when they ask the famous question, what are you looking for? Yeah. Well, I'm somebody's wife. Mm -hmm. I move according to that and mm -hmm. I date for intentional purposes only. And there's, um, I've been reading this book uh, by, I forget his name, but it's for relationship goals and it talks about, you know, dating intentionally. I actually found a book um, recommendation online by a guy. So I'm like, shoot, if he said it was good, let me right. buy this book. Right. <laughs> Of reading it or whatever but I think for me I just want I got to the point where it's like if this is what I want then I have to move accordingly to what I want yes. so dating uh, recreational is not something that I'm interested in and if when I, we talk about it and I say I'm dating you know intentionally and with a purpose that's normally what I say I date with a purpose mm -hmm. if that's not your same purpose that's okay because yeah. we're going to have this conversation <clears throat> initially in the beginning right. not months in yeah. and now I've wasted all this time yep yeah. So, what are your thoughts on dating intentionally versus recreation? Um, so, I'm the same way. When I first um, get to know a person, they, of course, they know and they ask you, what are you looking for? However, one thing that I have always 
had the power to do is my intuition. Like I can be able to tell just by five seconds or 10 minutes of having a conversation with a person, what it is that I see about that person, what I like about him and what I don't like about him and see if there's something that I want to go further. Mm -hmm. um, so there are times when there are some guys who I was like, I wouldn't want to do anything with you. You know, there's some guys who I was like, man, for me, you would just be a booty call. I know that's like <laughs> um, the difference of like men, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. But I, but um, that that helps me to be like, no, I wouldn't be interested in you. Then there would be the ones where I'd be like, oh, wow, I can see myself with you or I want to be with you um, more than that. And I would give my more of my energy towards those men and say no to the other ones, you know, who I don't see anything with or see no purpose for or with them. So, like you said, I'm somebody's wife, you know? So it's just a matter of um, I'm not about to just accept anything and anybody and you know and then, and then what i'm also looking for is somebody who is like a team player you know so um but you didn't get to that question yet but that's just what um you know we i was interested you know that's what so there's something that yeah so dating recreationally i mean that will have I want the person who, if I'm the one to date intentionally, recreationally, all of that will have to be together mm -hmm. inside of one whole package. And if I see that you're not interested in traveling, if I see that you're not interested in going places and doing things, well, I'm sorry, but even inside of my marriage, even inside of the relationship, this is something that I still want us to be able to do. And if you're not interested in any of that, then sorry, guess I gotta keep it moving. So that response makes me think of love languages when you said something about traveling because I did the whole, have you ever done the, the yeah. love So I did the whole thing and mine is affirmation. Okay. But I made up my own because I got a love language to travel. If you're not trying to get on that plane, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be, like you said, I want, I guess I, what you said is accurate because I want both. I want yeah. the intentional and the recreational, but I want it in the one person yeah. because I want to be able to still have fun yeah. and still be friends. Right. But I also want us to be about business. Like yeah. you said, a partner, a teammate so yeah. that we can, you know, collaborate and do both. Yeah. When it's time to have fun, we have fun. We still friends. I mean, so regardless yeah. if I'm mad at you, can't stand you, whatever. Right. We was friends before anything, before right. you became my man or right. my husband. So we're going to figure it out. We're going to work through right. it. But like you said, there are some things that I enjoy doing. I want somebody who's ready to travel. And it doesn't have to be this planned, elaborate heck. We could wake up on Monday and be like, I'm off on Thursday. You off on Thursday? Let's right. go, blah, blah, blah. Right. We'll be back. Right. Like, and I want it to be to the point where it's not always about the money. Like, I yeah. mean, true enough, we I have a career. And whomever I'm with, obviously, at that age, he better have a career. We won't talk. Right. Uh, <laughs> so he has a career. And we're trying, you know, that we're trying to reach goals. But it's not always about... The money, because like yeah. I said, you spend so much time getting the money, you can die tomorrow and your job is going to yeah. find somebody to replace you with 30 days. Right. So it's not always like I want to be able to live life to the yes. fullest wise here, but with that per person or that partner yeah. and do recreational stuff and uh, right. <laughs> intentional stuff too. So yeah. I think the love language really helps. Like yeah. I, I did that test and then um, the guy that I was talking to, he did it. And we had the same one, but that helped me to understand yeah. how to be able to communicate. Now, I don't know if he absorbed it that, you right. know, the same way over here, but right. I mean, he's a guy, you know, guys don't always think like we do, <laughs> yeah. but I do think that that's very helpful yeah. because it kind of lets you know what approach you need to take, how yes. you need to move and all that when you're dealing with that other person. Yes. So what's your love language? Um, I have affirmation um, and I also have um, touch, spending time with people. Mm -hmm. um, I think spending time with the, with my person is the biggest one. So, okay. yeah. And you know what? After I read the whole affirmation about, uh, or the love language about affirmation, I was like, that really is me. Like, for you to say, I missed you today or... Um, I, whatever the situation is, that really like, it's like, oh, for real? <laughs> right, right. That type of stuff versus, granted, you can come in with a gift and then if it ain't something I like, I'm like, yeah. you could have just told me. Damn, I love that it. was my least one. <laughs> Don't just give me a gift because then after that, I feel like that you're trying to bribe me to do something and yeah. I'm looking like, so, but real. Uh, <laughs> right, I'm like, no, because, um, no. 
Um, but as far as um, you, the biggest one is spending time with one another because that's how you can be able to learn of each other and everything. Even if you say, hey, I miss you, I can be able to, because I spent so much time with you, I can know if you're lying or if you tell them the truth. Because also right here and try to tell me that you miss me, you mess with somebody else and tell them the same thing, you know. But I mean, it is nice to hear, but you know. It's just to spend that time together, being able to share inside those moments and everything else. That's what means a lot to me. I agree. Even with, time. Uh, with relationships, with friendships, all of that, you know, so. Yeah, I agree. Because, I mean, you don't get that time back. Making memories is always a good thing. Yeah. Okay, so our next question is, setting boundaries are definitely needed when dating. What are some of the rules that you have? Um, number one, if my kids are present, you are not coming over to my house. <laughs> that's that's just not it. Um, <laughs> Wait, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's my number one. I put on here, you cannot come up to my house. <laughs> Once I do allow them to come over, it's definitely after we've been dating for a while. That yeah. ain't happening. You ain't coming around the kids. No, you can't meet the children. I'm sorry. Um, and then another one is... Um, I don't know, because that's the main one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And because no one's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trust issue. Number one, it's not even just about the kids. You can't come over to my house. Because what if I sit right there and don't want to be with you and you come in my, talker. in my driveway? Like, who the freak are you? Like, yeah. what are you doing? But like, oh, I just, do, but you, did you really mean that you want to talk? Yes, I really meant that. Like, uh, why are you pulling up, you know? Um, I, did, I guess I just had too many different experiences with that. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but one time I was living inside of an apartment community and I walked around my house naked and I didn't realize that the, the, the window was open. open. <laughs> <laughs> and one time my car got stuck inside the um, inside of the apartment community. And so then somebody gave me a jump and the man later on that night, he came knocking at the door and um, asking me to use my jumper cables. And I was like, well, how do you know where I live? And he was like, oh, I see you every night. I was like, you see, you see me. So watching. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, me and my cousin and my brother. And I was like, y'all have a party? <laughs> So ever since then, watching that's right, and I wasn't—I was younger, but I was just like, oh my gosh! So you know, I—I I don't want nobody popping up <laughs> just and because you never know who's watching or you know, people are crazy out here. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just sitting up here minding my business. I don't need somebody like doing that. Then um, I don't—I mean, you know, with men. So I was a victim of um, child abuse, like sexual abuse when I was younger or so. And I remember um, one of the, the perps um, was he, um, he stopped messing with me and he met this one lady who had a three-year-old daughter. And so when I looked, and so he he didn't want to marry her after they've been like six months break. I mean, after they met for like six months and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is it because of her or is it because of the daughter? So since then, I never let nobody meet my kids because I would never want to be in a position where I would wonder if the man is interested in my daughter or me. So uh, you can't yeah. meet or or my son or my daughter or whatever, you know. So that's a big no for me until I to get to know you and um, and everything. So and uh, and I don't feel like you can know a person within I mean six months. But yes, there's people who you know get married within six months because you know sometimes you do have that str that strong connection with the person. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I ain't never, I ain't never said after six months, I'm ready to get married. I don't know. <laughs> like, people have to do it. This is true. And, we, and our job, too. There's people this who is true. That. I mean, and I, bless their heart, I'm happy for them. I just never had that type of experience. But I'm sure it's out there because a lot of people do it. And yeah. they are married for years. They like, are. Forever. They are. And I always wanted that. I always wanted that true love and get to be able to be like, oh, my gosh, yes, six months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. I want you forever. But... I don't know. I, I think my uh, my six months is I found everything that's wrong with them. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, nah. <laughs> this ain't gonna work out. <laughs> I'm like you. I don't think. Yeah, I need a little longer than six months. Yeah, a little longer. Just a little bit. But I don't want like a four or five year either. I'm, I'm not doing that ever. So I, used I, to date I did this guy that, but. for six. I dated him for six years, and you can see why I'm still sitting here single. And I've never been married. <laughs> So I told myself when I got to that I'm somebody's wife mentality, I'm not doing that no yeah. more. 
um, I used to tell, I have this lady that I talk to all the time and she used to, she used to tell me, she said, Ashley, when you dating a guy, they know yeah sooner than you know they they, they figured it out and realized okay this is a person i want to be with she said it don't take all them years and after that i told myself i would never do that again yeah. like i felt like i was pretty much prepping him mm -hmm. for the next one right so now she gets all of my hard work that i <laughs> whatever it is that we work towards and establish and that mentality that he now has when he moves on to that next relationship so i, I told myself i would never do that again yeah. and actually when we have that whole conversation of dating intentionally or with the purpose i say it in there like i'm somebody's wife but it's not gonna i'm not getting ready to stick around for four and five years yeah. to be somebody's wife either because you, if you ever think about it when people get engaged they can get engaged in october 2016 and by march 2017 they're getting married yeah so if, if you can get engaged y'all could they could have started dating january 2016 right. they got uh, uh what is it engaged october and then they married the following march prime example i don't think six months is a good idea but right. you don't need all those years i'm not you going to be engaged for no we've been engaged for five years and we're just working on trying to do no first off i'm 38 right uh, we, whatever i've been working on i'm still working on and now right. you work on me right 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 well and two you don't i just feel like you just don't need all that time because no. i genuinely think that you when you know you know yeah um i have had um even my uncles there they um they always say a man knows. He was like, like they always tell me that they knew right before they was gonna marry their wife mm -hmm. that they knew that they were gonna marry her. Um, so and they, so it doesn't take time. It doesn't take well, a whole lot. Does. And my uncles, the one thing that they always instilled in me, they was like, don't waste time. A man knows, you know, and and everything. And they know if you if if you are the one for them or if you're not. Um, and if they're not saying yes, I want to be, then no. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I definitely agree. So for me, I have a list. I'm going to read it to you guys because I, I had to think about it. <laughs> so as far as my boundaries, I put on mine. You can't come over my house once I do allow them over. It's definitely after we've been dating for a while. Um, for me, it's just like my home is my safe haven. Yes. Um, I don't know you from the man in the moon. You're not coming over my house. Typically for the first couple of days, you have to, I'll meet you. Right. Um, and then when I finally decide to let you over my house, most likely my kids are at home. Yes. Um, cause my number one, my number two is meeting my kids is a no, no, unless we've been committing it, unless we are in a committed relationship and plan on being, you plan on being around for some time. Yes. Honestly, I prefer them not to meet my parents either. Oh, no. Um, until it's time. Family, no family. But it's kind of hard when it comes to my mother. She's one of those, cause I normally tell somebody yeah. I'm going somewhere. Right. So my mother is one of those, um, well, you can know about them, but you ain't going to meet them. She's one of those. Oh, okay. So you went such and such. And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> but then if I say, well, I have a date with XYZ, um, we're going to go to Twin Peaks. Oh, okay. So what time are you going? About eight. And in my mind, I'm just sharing with her the details <laughs> of where I'm going. And I'm liable to be sitting at Twin Peaks at 8.15 and my mother walk in. <laughs> so it's kind of hard. But I am her only child. So yeah. at this age, it's like, you know, um, you have to be safe and sorry. So I yeah. normally tell somebody. Um, yep. I do too. But if I had it my way, you ain't meet nobody. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, I could talk no, to my friends about yeah. you and they might know of you. Yeah. But you're not meeting oh, anybody unless meet we're anymore. serious. Right. Um, not my kids, not my parents, not my friends, nobody. And um, like I said, I might talk to my friends about you, but that's about it. But as far as I'm concerned, um, we got to get past the introduction and we got to have yes. at least be on chapter three of right. the situation. And then before. meeting the, everybody in the family, I'm like, my family going to have questions. So they are. Before so you, you got to get me prepared too. Right. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I have to make sure that you're able to sustain it. I can answer these questions. Prime example, in this day and age, I don't know if you saw where, do you, have you heard about Hope Portia? Oh, no. Okay, so do you watch Atlanta Housewives? No. Okay, so didn't get, oh, you briefing real quick so in the Atlanta housewives there's a person on there her name is Portia okay I used to be team Portia team Portia it's Portia love her to death but I ain't with her no more that was yesterday so on this season of Atlanta housewives there was a girl on there her name was Fallon okay. which was Portia's friend Fallon was 31 and she was married to this guy I think he's in his 50s okay um and on the show you know Fallon's married she has this elaborate house living the best life or whatever shows over yesterday Today's what Wednesday. So after Mother's Day, Portia goes online to say she's now dating Fallon's husband. Oh wow! They filed for a divorce. 
um, the way Portia made it seem like is that the divorce was finalized. Um, Fallon ended up coming on social media and was like, you know, to each his own, I'm just working on trying to get my, my divorce finalized. But to me, that whole thing is a prime example of taking your friends around your man. I love my girls to death. And my circle is pretty small. Like, most of my friends, we've been friends for years. Like, yeah. we go back from elementary to um uh, to um, high school. I even got some childhood friends. So I really don't have a big circle of yeah, friends. But, <clears throat> and I don't think in my heart that they would do anything like that. But you yeah. never know. And although those are my girls, I don't know the mentality of this man either. Right. So that's one of the things. Like, I just don't do the whole meat thing. Yeah. Um, as far as I don't want my kids to ever, even though my kids are older now, to grow an attachment with a temporary person. Yeah, right. I don't want, I, I mean, you know, I just... My girls may hear about you, but they probably ain't going to... I could probably count on two hand, one hand how many people they've actually met that I've actually dated. And you might even get to do a little FaceTime, too. Right. But y'all yeah, just say, we think you're ready to be he, he, and how high enough in the group. Right. Unless there's a group of us and that we all bring dates, but that's still some time in. Right. So, I'm all for the you're not meeting nobody. Um, number three I had is um, no sex. And if you aggressively talk about it, that's a turn off. So yeah. that's not topic of conversation every time we talk or I'll just stop answering your calls. Right. Um, number four, um, what did I put? Oh, I said, I wouldn't say that I have a time restriction as far as what times you can um, take me on a date, but please know that I'm not um, meeting you. I'm not a come meet me at 10 o'clock. No, of, please. Um, keep it respectful. I yes. am a mother and I work first shift. I met this guy um, years ago and now we're friends. We, I mean, you know, we hang out as friends, nothing more, nothing less. Um, but he used to always call after 10 and 11 o'clock. Hey, yeah. what's up? You want to go get some eat? I buy it. Yeah. You want to go um, do this? They um, they having a party at the strip club. You want to go? And I finally, I told him several times, look, first off, I like to sleep. Right. I'm not getting out of my bed at 10 anything no. to come meet you anywhere. Right. One. And two, I'm, you want to take me out in the daytime. Yeah. In the daylight. Yes. And it took me telling him over and over. And, and finally, I stopped talking to him for like months. I blocked him and everything. Yeah. In some kind of way, he eases his way back. But now he gets it. Or he'll yeah. be like, um, well, I got to do X, Y, Z. You want to meet up at the uh, taco joint? Because they know I like tacos. I'll be there at 10 o'clock on the dot. I got to go clean a building because he has his own business. So yeah. those things I can appreciate. But I also will tell him, well, you know, if I get home, it's a wrap. Yeah. But, I mean, it's all about respect. It I'm not is. coming out at 10 o'clock on yeah. a Tuesday to do anything. Yeah, and and I probably won't come out on a 10 o'clock on a Saturday. Because no. what have you done from the time you woke up to right. 10 o'clock that you couldn't spare an hour or two? Yes. To be respectful if you really want to right. be with me. Yes. I'm so, that's my time. other one. Yep. Um, and, oh, that was my last one. Yeah. So, that was the main thing. Is, you know, I feel like it... Um, goes both ways. Like I say, it's a level of respect. Yes. And a lot of it comes with, for me, with the guy, I think it comes with age, which again goes yeah. back to the whole age thing. I don't think I would date anybody younger than me because as far as I'm concerned, even though you're 38, you're really only 35 mentally. <laughs> so I got to give you some leeway right. anyway. So right. if I go date a 35 year old, hell, you're 29. <laughs> so at this point, I'll start right. over. Right. Right. Now I feel like I'm dating my younger brother. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no. Nah. Right. Um, but yeah, those would probably be my main restrictions. Yeah. Um, when dating. I would say that too. And, and even the time, not even just going out, but don't call me at two o'clock in the morning. I am sleeping. I, I have a job. And once again, I am a role model for my children. So I'm not about to sit right here and have men coming in and out of my house. I ain't going to have men calling me at all times of the night because ain't nothing open but legs. I'm not close. Kids the same thing. I have boys, so for me, I try to tell you don't call a girl out her name. Mm -hmm. You come respectful. You yeah. call at a respectful time. You you know, there's just certain things. You open her door. You pump her gas. And pumping gas, like I said before, that is like major. Because I yes. hate pumping gas. One, but I was there was this guy, we were, and we're friends. Actually, our moms are really close. Um, they're friends. And I remember one time we he and I was going somewhere. Who knows where we was? This is back in my twenties. I picked him up. I was like, oh, okay, I'll just pick you up. I picked him up, but I needed some gas. Mm -hmm. So we stopped at the gas station around the corner from his house. And I'm getting everything together so I can pay for the gas. And he's just sitting in the car. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm like, okay. So I go ahead and pay for the gas, come back up. He never gets out the car. Do you know I pumped my gas and I took his ass right back around the corner <laughs> to his house? Right. Till this day, we talk about that. I was like, he was like, if I didn't learn anything else, I learned you pump gas. You damn right. Because right. you will never, I make my kids pump my gas. You will never ride with me and not pump the gas. That's right. If I got to pump my own gas, what are you in this car for? <laughs> right. That is hilarious. So, yes. <laughs> I try to, I, like you said, I definitely try to be a role model um, as a woman for my kids, but I also try to show my kids, since I have boys, what to do for a woman. Yes. Or, you know, if she I always tells my, my oldest son, he's 18, if it comes easy, that ain't what you want. Right. You want no. the one you got to put in some work for right. because she's got a little bit more respect and morals about herself versus the one where you can talk her panties off right. in, a, in a conversation. Right. And in your mind, you're like, ooh, I got her, but... She's a hoe. Right. I mean, I mean, that's just pretty much what it is. Because right. if you got her, you best believe Somebody there's a couple else. more of them that's got her or right. on their way to get her too. Right. So I always try, you know, so I do agree um, as far as being an example. And that's part of being a parent. Yeah. And I mean, unfortunately, you know, since we're still dating, that's part of how we move or how right. you should move as a parent while right. you're dating. So I do agree. So my next question is, do you think guys set boundaries when they're dating? So the things that we just talked about, right. do you think that guys... <laughs> That's what I'm trying to think. <laughs> I think some of them do. Um, I think some of them... Yes, I think that they do. Um, the, the, one, the ones, once again, the older ones that I, that I have been dealing with, yes, they do. Um, and uh, like, for example, I have had guys who will... Um, let me know if they are interested in being in a relationship with someone. If they're not if they're interested in being in a relationship, then I can be able to say, okay, what you looking for? And they'll be like, oh, just a friendship. I have had guys who say, hey, I'm interested in being married. And, you know, and there's things they want, that they are looking for. And so then, you know, we have those conversations as well. Um, they're not, I have had guys who um, have said that they, um, be just just some of everything even with sexual uh how often they want sex and everything you know they they establish that as well and say it you know um and it's so yes i believe that the guys do have boundaries that they have but it has to be with the right woman you know with the right person um if you they if you're somebody who they don't care about i think that they don't really yeah, have any sure. because they know that you're not going to, they're not going to stay with you in the first place. You know, once again, like how we were talking about men, they can look at a woman and say what it is that they want with her mm -hmm. um, or say, oh, okay, you are somebody I want to be able to marry. So their boundaries and the way that they handle you, the way that they talk to you will be different than if they was just like, oh, look at that bootylicious girl right there. Right. You know? So um, it's just a matter of a different type of respect and everything else. So. Um, yeah, I think that they will have boundaries. Um, also, men, um, they don't want a woman who's just all about the, her mo his money and everything else. Um, and if he's up and he sees that you don't have anything, you don't have goals or anything, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that they probably wouldn't want to deal with you either, you know, because yeah. if they, they don't feel like you're more of a liability, what do you want? You know, you just waiting for some man to come and swoop you up and just take care of you mm -hmm. and everything. So, yes. I believe that men do have boundaries like women would. So based off what you said, I can agree that part. But if I think about the boundaries that we just talked about before this, the previous question, I don't think they do. <laughs> I, just, I just, I don't. Because if you think about it, when when's the last time you was talking to a guy and he was like, oh, you just want to come over to the house? Like, how long were y'all talking before you got invited to the house? Or how long were y'all talking before you met X, Y, and Z? I have, I am one of six, and I have three brothers mm -hmm. and a daddy. And when I think about one of my brothers, there could be times where we have big family function. Well, not big family, but, you know, the siblings are kids and the parents, so right. to speak. So we can have a family function, and my brother will bring a girl over, and she's like, hi. You know, she's all timid and shy and high, and we like, hey, how you doing, or whatever. And, you know, she's saying things or doing things, you know, to try to get on the good side or whatever. Mm -hmm. And me and my sister, and maybe even my stepmother, we looking like, girl, if you only knew. Right. So that's this week. Next week, we can have another family function. Now we have a barbecue, a kick out of a kickball game or whatever. And here he come again with somebody else. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's like, in my mind, it's like, poor thing, you don't realize you're one of many. And because I've been around that, that's how sometimes I feel. Like, I don't feel like 
for me, when somebody meets my family, I don't, I feel like that's a privilege because yeah. they're like, you know, you, we might have heard about people, but we ain't never met nobody in the flesh. Right. But I don't feel that same feeling when I go to meet guys' yeah. families because yeah. I look at it like my brother. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, like it's just nothing. It's just like all this, you know, she was with me or whatever. Yeah. I invited her to come over. So I don't feel like, and it might be, um, there might, there are probably, maybe guys out there that look at it like, you know, when I take somebody home to meet my family, this is special or whatever, yeah. you know, but I just don't feel that because of what I've been around. Yeah. And as far as, you know, how you, it's like, sometimes it's a revolving door and you're like, well, which one is that one? Right. Is that the one that was over the last time we <laughs> had the phone? And that's right. how, how it is sometimes. Yeah. And it's like, but then again, I do notice that my sisters and I don't do that. Yeah. So it's, it's that's what I mean yeah. by, I don't, I, I don't say that they have my a My brother is like that as well. He'll bring over females all the time like hey you know, I always be like hey you gonna invite somebody to this cookout because usually I'm like no you can't meet nobody um I have my my uh ex-husband who is my kid's father and you know he still hasn't met all the family <laughs> and we were together for I, I've known him for 20 years and he has not met like all my mom uh, my mom's brothers and sisters we have family reunions often and he hasn't met my cousins they're like Felicia how come we never met him I was like, I mean, he just didn't, he didn't meet, he didn't, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we were together and everything, but I was like, I wasn't ready for all the the questions, you know, so. Yeah, so you gotta get prepared. I mean, you have, well, <laughs> then after that, it's just a matter of, I know that that's a long time to be with somebody and still not feel like that he can be able to sustain, but. He so it might, it might have been that person. Maybe, you, you know, the next person you meet is like, okay, oh, yeah. he might be ready. Right. But that one before wasn't ready. <laughs> I was just like, okay, so, you know, but, so, no, I, I, and I would agree. So, I think, and I think that, I was trying to think about even my uncles, like, they would bring over some of their female friends as well and stuff, and I was like, well, who is she, you know, and they're okay, and next time, they don't have that same person, you know, so, I think that. Um, that, that's what I'm saying. I think that it just depends. On, and some things, I guess, men have boundaries with, but in other things, they don't have that same thing. I don't know if, if men just feel like they have to have somebody and show off because, you know, they, it be. it, it's more like, oh, yeah, I can, I get girls, you know, type right. of ordeal where we don't care. You know? I, it's not about me getting the dude. It's about, are you the right dude? You right. Know? Especially so. if I'm here to bring you around the family. Right. But I will say, you know, when I think about it, the guys that I've dated or that I've been with when I did meet their parents, like, I guess I'm just the one that has my own personal relationship. Like, I think back to when I was in high school from my oldest son's dad. She didn't have daughters. I okay. was her daughter. Okay. And um, so, and we, I mean, obviously we still have a relationship today. The guy I dated after high school, his parents didn't drive. They used to call and ask me to take them places. Oh, wow. So, I, and even with my, my youngest son's dad, his mother didn't drive. She used to be the same way. Like, I've developed a relationship with all of them. Now, granted, when their son's time is up, their time is up. Right. Like, we ain't cool. Like, <laughs> no more. You better call somebody else for that ride. But every one of them, all the way up until my ex, I have developed a personal relationship with the parents to the point where they have my phone number and they will call me or I will. I probably didn't call them. But right. they would call me and I would answer. Well, for me, I think but, that I, um, if a guy asks me to come um, and spend time with his family, I have declined. I've been really? like, yeah, I could decline so many people. <laughs> I've been like, um, no, nah, we ain't that. We ain't there yet, you know. So they're like, oh, like not they'd be okay with it. But I mean, it was more like, I mean, we didn't. Of course, we didn't never stay together, you know. But I mean, but. He would be like, hey, I'm going over to my mom's house or my family's house. You want to come and you want to hang out? And I'm like, uh, no. I was like, because who am I? We haven't established, like, who oh, who, yeah. who are we yet? You know what I mean? Like, how far are we going to go? And I don't want to meet your mom um, and then we're we're over and we're done with in, what, a week or two? I'm not about to be just somebody she that she's holding to. around. <laughs> I, I know, and I'm not about to be that. Used to I, I don't know. It's just... It's just I don't know. But I will say those people that I talk about and have a relationship, we were all in a relationship. I mean, not, we're not all, yeah, but I mean, right, right. We, we, the guy yeah, right. well, we're in a relationship. Right. I mean, so it wasn't just a dating. Like, yeah, we were actually so in a we were like in a relationship for six months or whatever, but I still didn't want yeah, well, yeah. No, I still yeah, didn't want I, But you know, I like family functions. So once we too. get to that point and you're coming around the family, which... 
like I said, very rarely does it happen. Or I will say, the, my ex, he was around my mother's side of the family a lot, more so than my dad's side of the family. Now, when it was time to do those functions, most of the time he wasn't in town, so I didn't have to worry about it. But when he did come to town, if something was going on with my mom's side, he was around. And he was around my kids. He actually had a relationship with my kids to the point where when they were out of school, they would be like, can, can we go up to... Um, northern indiana and go stay there are they on break and he had two sons that were close in age with him. he had adult kids and teenage kids so which was a good thing but yeah. um yeah i'm i think for me if we're dating and we're serious and we're committed and your family's going on a family trip and you want me to go that's different but yeah. if we just dating and i'm just one of the seven out the week. Yeah. I'm good. Well, I guess it's also... If we're casually dating, I guess. Right. And I guess that the only, another reason why I declined was because I was a, a mom of young kids. And I didn't want them to come and, like, what am I going to do with them? Because, like, their dad wasn't as active inside their lives and everything. Mm -hmm. So, it was uh, their dad. Because I have five kids. Only, you know, four of them have the same father. So, it was just like... So, if their dad wasn't that um, that inside their life, then... No, I don't want to come to your function and introduce you to me and, you know, and, you know, so. So, when you different. do the whole introduction thing, okay, let's say y'all been dating for a while and you're ready to meet, friends with me the kids. Do, does he meet the dad? So, um, yes, the, well, the, the last, the last relationship, yes, because, um, with my last child, my baby dad, number two, um, he did meet the dad, and that turned into a disaster. And I said I would never ever do that again um, because, like, um, they started. Uh, so it was cool at first, and then after that, my um, ex husband he was trying to get back with me and telling me that he loved me and everything. Then you got this dude over here, like, hey, I love you, and he was like, oh, I love you even more. I love oh, you more than you. So then after <laughs> right, so then after that, I was just like, oh my gosh. Then after that, they start talking to one another, and they're like, well, you can have. Her now and then he goes no no what? he was like you can have her and I was like I don't want neither one of you and so then after that they like it, it just became it, it just became too much and so then I had to push back and I was just sitting there like well y'all can have each other <laughs> you know yeah, that's the kind of situation so and it was just to become in jealousy because and on both ends and I'm just sitting right there like what the freak <laughs> So, never again would I ever introduce nobody to each other because that was a total disaster. I never knew that that was going to end up like that. So. <laughs> I've never had that happen. I know. And I don't know. I didn't know what to do. I was like, <laughs> oh, Lord. And so then, like, there was a time when I was um, sitting at my baby dad, uh, at my ex-husband's house with the kids or whatever. And my, my baby dad number two showed up. And he was sitting outside hiding behind a garbage can and my ex-husband happened to see him. And so then oh, they were sitting inside the house and everything. And so he was like, Felicia, don't come outside. And I was like, well, what's going on? And so, because they had came back from the store, the kids and, my, and their dad came back from the store. And I'm just sitting right here like, I just want to hang out with the kids because, you know, it was it was his weekend. And I was like, what do I do with myself? <laughs> I, this is new. I don't know what to do. So I was like, well, can I come and hang out with y'all? And so then all that was going on because we were me and my, my baby dad number two we were um not on terms we wasn't um we stopped talking and everything so then after that then that's when he came outside and i was just like what the freak <laughs> then i get a text message and everything and he texted the, my baby dad too text me and was like um do you know where i am i was like uh the no he was like i'm outside and my kid's father came in the house and was like Felicia. You know, everything is okay. Just don't leave yet. Don't go outside and everything. And I was like, why? So I have approached my kid's father number one and was like, why can't I go outside? Because he outside? He was like, how do you know that? I said, like, because he been texting me. <laughs> he told me he was outside. So I don't know. My story is just yeah, crazy. That's different. So, I don't think I ever had a fight over this. <laughs> but I don't think I've ever had them going at it. Like, no, I they was supposed to have went at it. That's the whole thing. I mean, we was all kosher. We were supposed to have been cool. Like, I didn't put any difference between any one of them. You know, like, I would let, um, 
anytime that I, if I did hang out with my, with my kid's father or whatever, I always let him know, hey, I'm just going over here, about to drop the kids off mm -hmm. and everything. You can free, freely come over here and everything else and stuff. And it was supposed to have been cool. Like, um, I invited him out and if it was like time for my kids to go, we wanted to go on a vacation. I invited him and my kid's father and everything I else. I don't know. But <laughs> we ain't no one big happy feelings. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, but it was more so, to, hey, you want this memory with your kids or whatever. I felt that we, we had this understanding oh. that we're not together. We have this understanding that we're divorced, you know, that we're not a, a couple anymore. Uh, it, it's over. So um, one thing that I always used to tell my kid's father is that, or my ex-husband, I say anytime, even after we break up, what I would want us to do is be able to live like even next door to one another, oh, where no. we could be able mm -hmm. to see one another. She's and... different. <laughs> right. right. Well, I, that's what I wanted. I was like, I, I don't want us to have to be arguing and fussing and fighting. And I was like, and I still want us to be able to be friends because if we um, spent all these years together, we should know one another. We should know how to make each other happy, how to make what makes each other sad and mad and everything else. And I was like, and we should be able to still be friends even after all of this. If I said that I loved you, which I did, if I said I care for you, which I did, how come we can't just continue that and still live apart? But after so that, you think that if that's how you your mind was, how would you think that the girl that he's dating? Because she'd probably be like me. Oh, hell no. <laughs> well, no, well, that's what I said. Some kind of lie. Well, of that's it. what I said too. I was like, then after that, if you date and so, and everything, and she felt a certain kind of way, then that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I I would just be like, all right. You know, I I am big on. Um, family. I am big on um, relationships. I am and d d relationships in general. Even if me and you are, if we were dating and everything else, um, and we broke up or whatever, why should we break up inside of a way that it's like angry? You know, we should still be able to be amicable, uh, amicable, and still be able to go out and be like, okay, well, I just don't want to be with you. And mm -hmm. if we saw that, and if I value you, because once again, I value people. And I value your personality. If I talked to you for a little bit of time and I saw something that I liked about you, just because me and you are not meant to be together in a relationship as far as a romantic couple, can't we still be friends? Can we still hang out? There's something else about you that I could still be able to benefit from you, right? And if not, then it's just like, okay, well, then no, you know, that's it. We, we're done. We're finished and everything. So that's just me where I come from. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> so for me, <laughs> I think I thought I, I I think that it's a respect level when you're seriously involved with somebody and this person is gonna be around your kids that you should yeah. introduce. Right. Um now I don't want y'all to become BFS. Now I, I you may call and compare notes don't do it. <laughs> all of that mess about me. Right. No, but I think that it's a level of respect. Um I can remember when um, I was I had had my oldest son and he had to have been no more than one years old and at that time I was dating my um, younger son's dad so we're in our twenties I had my son when I was twenty so let's just say I'm twenty one and the oldest son's daddy came over to see his son the youngest son's daddy which I didn't have my I didn't have my youngest son at so baby daddy number two comes. I don't know, but words got to get exchanged. And here I am in the middle of a 6'7 and a 5'11 trying to stop <laughs> with my baby. <laughs> trying to stop them. I'm like, oh, no. But we were younger. Yeah. And as I look back, it's like, okay, that was to be expected. You're young. You're immature. I'm a single mother trying to make it work with the one. I mean, not in the, trying to make it work, but trying to have that father-son right. relationship. But yet, and still, I've moved on. And at that time, I'm pretty sure he had moved on too. Right. So fast forward to my adult uh, relationships. I remember with my ex, um, my kids are older. So obviously when they go to their dad's house, if they've been around this person, they're probably talking about it, whether it be directly to their dads or yeah. their siblings. And which is fine. I mean, because if there was something that I didn't want them to have a conversation about, then they wouldn't be a part of it. Right. So right. that was fine. And my kids play AAU basketball. So we would travel a lot before the pandemic. And I can remember one time where he had came down for the weekend. And I told the kids that, you know, he'll be here um, this weekend and he's going to come to the games. I gave him a heads up. Okay. It was already granted when he came that he knew that the kids' daddy was going to be there. So when we got to the game, um, he so the, the boyfriend introduced himself to the kids' daddy. He's older. So he's like, you know, hey, what's up? And walks over in the midst of it. And I'm like, you know, this is such and such, such and such, this is such and such. 
And they were cordial. Okay. I mean, you know, nothing more, nothing less, you know, cordial. But I remember a time where we had went to another game, another weekend, and we were there first, and the kid's daddy walked in and he didn't speak. Mm-hmm. And the my boyfriend at the time said something to me about it. What he said was right. You know, we there, you speak. That's just mm-hmm. like if you walk in somebody's house and I'm sitting here, you right. speak to us. We were here first. Same situation. Right. But, I mean, granted, for us, I can have that conversation with the kid's daddy. And after I said something to him, he was like, ah, nah, nah, whatever, whatever. But he came back and he was like, you know, after I thought about it, you're right. And like I said, I gave him the same example. If I'm sitting in the house and you walk in, you speak to me right. as you come in the house. It's no different than if I walk in your house. Right. So after we had the conversation, he was cool. But I think for me, it's just more so of a level of respect. If this is a person yeah. I'm with and this is a person that our kids are going to be around, yeah. then it's a matter of, hey, how you doing? My name is Ashley. You know, I'm really fine at little baby number one, baby number two, or whatever the situation is, just as as a level of respect and courtesy. Now, I'm not asking y'all to be BFFs. Right. We don't need to exchange phone numbers. Right. I don't need to call and tell you what he done did, what he done said. We not doing none of that. Right. But it's a matter of respect. Um, my kid's dad um, has other kids, and they're all teenagers, and they all have my phone number. And now, and it was never any beef between me and the baby mamas well i take it back it was one but i never liked it but anyway <laughs> but it's to the point now where the kids are older and if they need a ride home and their mama's busy and their dad's busy it's not surprising if somebody calls and says, hey ashley i'm at work my mom can't pick me up daddy's blah 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 do you mind going to get me yeah. and if it's if i'm not doing anything then I, I don't mind coming to get you but i feel like the other baby i'm thinking of two of the baby mamas that but either one of them will do the same for my kids. Yeah. Like one of the one of his sons stayed with me for a whole summer. Huh. So I mean, but it's a matter of the fact that the kids are older, and yeah. it's about co-parenting and making it work. Yes. Especially once you've moved on and realize, okay, this is not what I. I mean, he's not what I want, but right. we still got to be parents to these kids. So at the end of the day, I just really think it's about respect. Yes. Um, I think that it's uh, and even though my kids are fourteen and eighteen, I would still get to the point where I would introduce when it was time. Yeah. Like the guy the girl that my kids' father is dating now, he never my kids talked about it. I knew her name. Yeah. Never seen her but I knew her name. But I knew what she looked like because one of the kids I went to the nail shop and one of the girls was with her. Mm-hmm. One of his daughters they were at the nail shop and of course they speak, Hi Ashley, blah 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 whatever. And I remember, you know, my kids, so I went up and I introduced myself, you know, are you such and such? And she said, yes. And I said, well, I'm, you know, the boys' mother. Mm. And she went on, oh, your kids are great. I mean, you know, to me, it's like, okay, well, one thing I can put a face with a name, but yeah. I, obviously, um, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, it might not be that serious because he ain't brought you around or said, you know, well, when you pick the kids up, wait a minute, because I want you to meet blah, yeah. blah, blah. So, I mean, it's only right. The kids and already came and spoke to me, hugged me, then, you know, hey, how you doing? I'm right. Now, we ain't got to be BFS, and as long right. as you treat my kids okay, right. I'm cool with you, but, um, yeah, I think it's just a level of respect. I do, I think yeah. it's, but I don't think that's got to be, that's like, um, we were talking about meeting the kids, so after you have met the kids, it's still got to be a little bit of time <laughs> before yeah. you meet the dad. Let me right. give you another month. To yeah. see how it is with the kids. But again, granted, by the time you meet the kids, it's been months. Yeah. Or it's been some time before we even get to that point. So right. I do agree. Okay, so our next question is, um, do you have a list of things that you need? Everybody talks about how, um, what's her name? Sierra had a prayer and she had a list of things that you need. Or And the most recent one was, um, is it Tamia, the one that's married to Grand Hill? I think so. She was talking about her prayer and the list of things. Do you have, maybe not necessarily your prayer, but do you have like a, a list of, I need him to have everything on this list. I need all these boxes to be checked in. What's some that maybe, if you got 10 things, what are some of them that are like bottom line non-negotiables? Okay. Um, yes, I have a list. I have had a list since I was 11. <laughs> has your list changed since you were 11 a little bit? No, it has not. <laughs> and I haven't found one that fills everything on that list. And that's pretty bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> I had to revise it. <laughs> well, so then after that, so that's when the second part of your question, like, have you revised it? Or, like, what is it that you are not okay with? So the very first thing that uh, is on my list is that I have come from the church, you know, my dad is a pastor, we know about God, you know, and God inside of my, my life is very important, it's very big, my relationship with God is very good um, and strong, and, and you know, so for me, that's something that my mate has to 
have. You know, he has to love God. You know, I'm not looking for no pastor. I don't want to pass. If I seen a pastor of a man who said, he's like, hey, I'm a pastor. pastor. I'm like, okay, well, you are not the one. I, I ain't ready to be nobody first lady. <laughs> I am not. Still I, would not I would not be the pastor. I would pray don't, for and cut you I out. don't want you to be a deacon. <laughs> I don't, you don't have to go to church like every Sunday or, you know, um, but you, as far as my relationship, right. <laughs> but as far as the relationship, you know, with God, that is important to me. Um, two, um, I wanted five kids because I wanted a family and I have five kids because so family for me is really big. So the, um, the second thing on the list is that you have to be a family man. So that means that, um, you have to want to be here with your family. You have to have a relationship with your own family. You know, you have to be able to have a, fa a relationship with my family. So that's big. When you finally can meet Right. When you finally can meet them. <laughs> right. Um, and then when you have that relationship, you have to be able to interact. Like, um, I have my sisters there. Some of their husbands don't really interact as often as I want them to. Mm -hmm. um, with the family, like my younger sister, her husband goes upstairs and, you know, just chills by himself, you know, and we be at their house. And I'm like, well, where you at? You know? Right. Um, so it, that's not cool. And I mean, I understand that everybody may not like a big family because like my mom has um, 11 brothers and sisters. And when you have that many people there, plus I, um, my mom had five kids. I'm the third out of five. Um, and then I have my own five kids and then my, my sister. So, you know, that adds up really quickly. <laughs> Just y'all alone is a lot. <laughs> right. And then my auntie, she like continues the, she has a, a, like three generations under her. And I was like, dang, auntie. I said, do you realize you had three generations? She was like, no. But yeah, so, um, you know, so when you have that many people, um, um, Yes, I understand that could be overwhelming, especially if you don't, if you're not used to that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so for me, of having a family, being a part of the family is really big. Um, I said, um, no smoking, no drinking, no, no uh, abusive man. Smoking and drinking is very hard. <laughs> I was, that's just, it's almost as hard as uh, finding a man with no kids. I know. So I was living enough. right. I was like, oh, okay. So every person, I then after that, like I got on a dating app and like last last year, like in December, and I was only on there for thirty days. <laughs> I was like, if I don't find somebody in thirty days, that's too bad. <laughs> and like, I, I was like, um, you know, it had if you were a non-smoker, but then after that, in parentheses, it had like a social smoker or like occasional. I was like, well, are you a smoker or not? I thought it was like yes and no, you know. So it's just, or then after that, it's just like, well, what you talking about when you say smoke? I'm looking like nothing. Anything that has smoke coming out of it, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want none of it, you know? So I'm not trying to find a drinker, not trying to find a smoker. Those have been really hard um, and everything. But even though my, um, my husband, my ex-husband, he wasn't a smoker or a drinker. Um, so that wasn't really difficult or, or so. And there's, there's a lot of people who, but lately, it seems like everybody smoked weed, especially in that over 50 age. I think that, I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, you know what? Somebody told me because they were born in the 70s. Yeah, they So, I am going with the people born in the 70s. Yes. Okay. So, because that's 1971. Okay. So, maybe that's hot. <laughs> so maybe I do need to go to the 80s, but no, I don't want them. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> maybe the them. early 80s, because even the early 80s was still 40. Yeah, because yeah, I'm 80, 80, so 80. Yeah. 79, 80. Yep. But they probably no. smoke too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, um, and then after that, it's like um, no abuse, um, no arguments. I know that's really hard, but uh, somebody who's able to say sorry, somebody who's able to um, be that's forgiving. communication. Yeah. Oh, that, that's also at the top. Yeah. Communication is key. You have to be willing to communicate. Um, I also wanted somebody who's their own individual, but know how to be able to come back and be a family um, and be a team player. You know, um, you have to have goals. I don't care how old you are. I feel like that being goal oriented is a must. Um, you have to be willing to you have to have knowledge. You have to be intelligent. Uh, I don't want someone right, you can hold a conversation. Yes. <laughs> and I just I have had conversations with some guys I'm like, oh my baby's smart. I'm like, no, can you please add to this conversation? <laughs> don't be like, my baby's smart, my baby's smart. I was like, damn, can't say the same thing back. 
<laughs> so somebody got to be <laughs> right. Um, so um, you know, just just those types of things. So goal oriented is is big for me. Um, communication is very big. Uh, somebody who loves me, uh, that, that's also important. Yes. <laughs> um, and somebody who knows, like I said, knows how to forgive quickly. I don't want somebody who, if we do have a disagreement, it lasts and lingers for months and days. And well, you want to bring it up in the next yes, argument. And, or right. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so let's go ahead. Let's, let's be able to truly get over it and, you know, still enjoy each other. Um, that's just, that's me. Um, and, you know, so those are some of the big ones. I try so to think your your list is I, I will say um a lot of what you have on your list I have on my list. Um now I probably got a little bit more specific about some of the things. Let me see what I put when I was prepping. My ideal man is for, is first and foremost, um, he wants to be a husband. Yeah. Um, aka a partner, aka a teammate, aka a pilot, because I'm a co pilot. Um, I also want somebody who's patient because yes. I am oh, extremely I indecisive. I from the you know how they be talking about on social media, you ask her what she wants to eat, she don't know, but then when you come in with something she didn't want that or why you bring that, that's me. So I need you to be patient. Um I have gentle, yes, laid back, yes. an example of a strong man because I have yes. sons. Um, and a leader, yes. Because um, I mean, if you want to be a husband, you want to be a leader, yes. And I have to be able to feel comfortable to follow your lead, yes. God fearing, yes. Family oriented, yes. Honest, yes. Effective communicator, because yes. to me, without communication, we have nothing, and we should be able to have a conversation without yelling and going yes. back and forth. Where I am able to talk, and you're able to talk, and we can listen and come up with a regular resolution, yes. Respectful, yes. A gentleman, yes. Um, one that has a relationship with his mother. That's yes. important to me because I feel like if you have a good relationship with your mother, then you know how well try to treat me. Yes. I can remember um the last guy that um I've been dating, I met him and I asked him the very first night. We were out of town. I met him while I was out of town and he was out of town. Have you talked to your mother since you've been here? <laughs> I didn't know this man from the man of move, but I to me it was like if you have, then that means you have some kind of relationship with your mother. Right. Because I'm really close to both my parents, actually. Yeah. But I'm closer, obviously, with my mother. But, yes. I mean, me and my daddy, we have our own relationship. But that is important. Yes. Um, I have a provider. Yes. Granted, I have my own money. I have my no, own job. Yes. But it's still the man's job to be able to provide. Yes. Um, a protector. I want yes. to feel safe around you. Right. Caring. Yes. A good listener. Yeah. And... At the end of the day, I just want to be my homie lover friend. Like I said, I want to be able to have a yes. partnership, um, yes. a my... friendship, yep. and a union. Yep. All in one. That's so what I said. I think that best friend. I will actually want my mate to be my best friend. Now, I think he can be my best friend, but I still got my own friend. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yes. it, I remember there was this time when I was dating a guy and... I would be like, uh, oh, I want to go out this weekend. And I would call. I have a, like I said, my circle is small. And depending on what I want to do, I know who I can call. Yeah. If I want to do one thing, I knew I could call this friend. Or if I wanted to go eat, I knew I could call this friend. Well, I wanted to go out. And if my, my going out buddy couldn't go out, the guy that I was dating, I knew that if I was fails, he would go. Yeah. And, you know, I would try to give him a break. But yeah. it's like that type of relationship to the point where if I'm sitting at home, I'm like, I want to get cute and go somewhere. And I call one of my girls or everybody's busy and I don't necessarily want to do it by myself. Then he's like, all right, baby, come on, let's go. I yeah. go with you. It's right. cool. Yeah. But we're still going to have a good time. Yeah. Like somebody who I can actually have fun with. Yes. Now, I don't want you to say I'll go. It's and cool. And then you're stale. And yeah. your attitude is funky. And I could just yes. do it by myself. I right. just want to know that. If you're going to go, I'm going to have just as much fun with yes. you as I would have with, with my girl. Yes. And even vice versa. Because, I yes. mean, the same goes for him. You yes. want to go to the bar and have beers. Well, I was trying to sit at home and watch Lifetime. But if you don't got nobody to go with, I'll go with you. Right. Like, and we're still going to have a good time. Right. So, that person, you know, being that homie lover friend is very important. Yes. I, I agree. Yes. So, I don't have any more questions. I guess we can conclude. No, I mean, the main thing is, I don't, I don't know if we're going to find them. <laughs> in this pool it's contaminated I don't know if we gonna find them but I'm sure we're not the only ones in our age no. range in our city outside of our city that has this struggle yeah it, we can't be no. but I do believe that there's somebody out there for everybody yeah I do I think that everybody has a person but it's just a matter of finding that person and how do you find that person and sometimes you get to the point where you're like I'm gonna just stay in the house 
So then it's like, well, hell, he gonna have to come knock on the door and be like, <laughs> right. God sent me yes. to knock on your door and tell you I'm your person because right. now you won't even come out the house. <laughs> right. You can see if you can beat somebody. Right. What's the luck of the draw? Well, I like. feel like I'm gonna meet him, but I, don't I, know I, I think I am too. But when? I hope I ain't old and gray. I'm hope, still a PYT, and I'm trying to enjoy my PYT. I hope I'm December 2021. 20, <laughs> But I said I'm somebody's wife, so I pray that what I, what is it I affirming manifesting that I'm gonna be somebody's wife on my way to being somebody's wife by the end of the year. How about that? <laughs> so by yes. the end of 2020, so you can have wife. what you say. So yes, so I believe it. I receive it. It's mine, <laughs> and I believe that there are good ones out there. There are. I do believe that. I believe that they're good ones. It's just a matter of deciphering and ciphering through the yes, through, which the, ones. through the pool of pee. <laughs> somebody gonna come clean the pool out though for us, y'all. Sure is. Because <laughs> there's somebody Amen. out there for everybody, and we are gonna find our person. Yes, we are. By the end of twenty twenty one. Yeah. Hopefully. No Fingers crossed. Right. All right. So thank you, Felicia, for coming in. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. Wine. And talking about what's on your mind. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned, you guys, for the next topic and discussion. And if you have any suggestions, please feel free to drop your comments below. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Okay, girl. So we done with our chat. What did you think? I would love to hear from any ladies who are going through the same struggle. Please feel free to drop your comments below. Also, let me know what other things you'd like for us to discuss while we sip our wine and talk about what's on our mind. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you get your ding every time a new video is posted. Thanks again for tuning in and we will see you next time.